three. Albert. What a pleasant surprise, Albert. I'm not here to exchange hypocritical expressions of politeness, but to demand an explanation. For what, my dear boy? All Paris buzzes with the story in the paper this morning. The one casting terrible aspersions on my father. On his integrity. On his military accomplishments. On his honor. Yes. It is in the Journal du Globe. The newspaper you so recently purchased. You are in my home, Albert. I alone have the right to raise my voice here. You are responsible for that story. Do you deny it? I consider the glove thrown now, there. Tomorrow morning, sir. The field of Mars. Dawn. The field of Mars. Why? He challenged me, madam. And what would you expect from a proud son? The general is his father. I had a father once. Then you know how the boy feels. You can understand how zealous he is after the general's good name. What general? My business is with a lieutenant I used to know. What business? Revenge, madam. For what? For marrying the girl you love. He does not deserve your vengeance. It was I. I was weak. I could bear my loneliness no longer. I married him because they told me you died in the Chateau d'If shortly after your arrest. But why was I in the Chateau d'If? Why was I arrested? I do not know. I presume you recognize the hand. How did you come by this? With bribery, madam. I cannot believe. For 14 years, because of that letter, I lived in a dungeon of the Chateau d'If, so near to you. And I never knew that you'd married. Or that my father had died of hunger. Hunger? Oh, I did not know. We had moved away. Ask me to forgive a man for stealing my love for the lover's deception. Very well, since you ask it, I forgive him that. Ask me to forgive him for stealing 14 years of my life. Very well, forgive him. But forgive him for destroying my father. Never, madam. Never. In my dreams, I have seen you dead. Thrown to the bottom of one of those pits where jailers throw their dead prisoners. And I wake from this incessant dream with a cry, shuddering and cold. Have you ever dreamed your father dead of hunger? Have you ever dreamed of the one you love giving her hand to a rival while you perish at the bottom of a pit? Worse. I have seen him I loved on the point of murdering my son. Oh, Edmund, please. What good has it done for me to mourn for you eternally in the secret recesses of my heart? When I thought you dead, I should have died too. But foolishly, I went on living and for nearly 20 years compared all men to you and found them wanting. Missing you has been a day after day, year after year torment to me. And in all this time, my one consolation has been my son. My innocent son who should have been ours. Our son, Edmund. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She told you. Everything. I offer you my apologies, sir. You have every right to expose my father. Providence again. I am the emissary of God. I've been spared to carry out his will. General Mondego, this special committee of the House of Deputies is well aware of your illustrious past. We salute with profound respect the decorations you bear as testament to your extraordinary military career. It is then a great disturbance to this committee to read the revelations in the newspaper Le Journal du Globe. Starting yesterday with a threat of disclosures, Le Journal de Globe continues today with a long list of definite accusations. It is written here, in the Greek war when you were French emissary to the court of Ali Pasha, that you betrayed him to the Turks. It is written here... Monsieur le Président, may I proceed immediately to my own defense? Proceed, Monsieur. Document. A signed letter from the Ali Pasha himself, reposing in me expressions of the utmost confidence. So complete was his faith in me that on his deathbed he resigned his wife and daughter to my care. His wife and daughter. What happened to that wife and daughter? I searched for them, Monsieur le Président. In the midst of the battle, my life was in constant danger, but I searched for them until I found them. They had been slaughtered by the enemy. Can you produce testaments to the truth of what you have asserted? Monsieur le Président, if the signed proof of Ali Pasha is not enough, I offer my word of honor as a French officer. Last but not least, this. You ask for witnesses of proof? I ask for a show of witnesses against me. What is the evidence? Some article in a scurrilous journal? Who gave these lies to this newspaper? Where is he? Let him come forth and throw a glove in my face! Monsieur le Comte, your defense has a ring of validity. Your points well taken. You will therefore be gratified to learn the contents of this note I have just received, as follows. I was present at the death of Ali Pasha. I know what is become of the wife and the daughter. I claim the honor of being heard. Who wrote those words? The note is unsigned, sir, but the witness can be summoned on your approval. Only on your approval. Let him appear. Let him appear. identify yourself please I am the daughter of Ali Pasha in front of you sir is a register of my birth and my baptism there is also in that packet a record of the sale of my person and that of my mother the sale you say a French officer sold us into slavery for the sum of 40,000 francs the name of that officer Fernan Mondego, you were trusted by my noble father. You were loved by him as a son. 
He entrusted you with the safe conduct of his wife and daughter. But you're a liar, a traitor, an assassin. Assassin! It was your soul that killed my father. Monsieur le General, will you reply? Lies, lies, they're lies. You take the word of an infidel foreigner against the word of a general, of the army, of the king. The woman is an imposter. Who is an imposter? She is truly the daughter of Ali Pasha. Those documents will prove it. They'll verify themselves soon enough. And when they are verified, General Mondego, Count of Mondego, hero of Yanina, what is your connection with this woman? Ask first, what is my connection with one named Edmund Dantes? So, the light begins to break. Our sailor boy, back from the Isle of the Dead, huh? <laughs> Insisting on his revenge and getting it, I begin to see, yes. Caderousse dead, uh, Dangler dead, Villefort confined to an asylum. Is it my turn, Edmund? It is. You've done it exceedingly well, the way you expose us one by one, and then you strike. You ruin a man with exquisite finesse, but before you kick this dog to death, beware. He barks. Fight! Well, having ruined me, you now give me cause for revenge. I claim the right to send the dead back to the dead. Can you defend yourself, Edmund? Or do you stare boldly? escape prison by the simple trick of dying. You'll serve your sentence in this world before you go to hell. General Mondrigo, you are under arrest. empty. Where is the Countess Mondego? She has gone to Marseille. When? Yesterday. <laughs>
are you traveling? To Africa, to find my son and be near him. He's joined the army. Albert, a soldier? He wants to expiate his father's sins. Let me join you on your voyage. I can be of help to you both. My son would never permit that. Once you said he should have been our son. Should have been, yes. But he has a father, and he has his father's name. A name you so thoroughly destroyed. That was simple justice, madam. And believe me, it brought me no joy. But now my task's accomplished. I have no particular place in the world, no strong desire in life. But to make amends where I've hurt the innocent. Avenging angels may not ask forgiveness of their victims. I am no longer the instrument of God. I've been plunged back into nothingness. I'm searching for something lost. My soul, myself, for Edmund Dantes. You will never find him. He died a long time ago in the Chateau d'If. And much of me is buried with him. But I celebrate the Count of Monte Cristo's return to the world of men. And I wish for him, from the depths of my heart, that he will find the peace for which he yearns. But never. Never will he find that perfect love. Which two young people lost. Irretrievably lost so many, many years ago. Bon voyage. Countess Mondego. Goodbye, Count.